Hi everyone, this is Taylor with The Daily Geddon, and this week we're going to talk about Title III of the CARES Act. And Title III of the CARES Act is the longest written out section of the bill, because there's a lot of technical amendments and things that they have to go back and change in order to make it work. And with that, we're just going to get right into it. First of all, Title III of this bill is entitled, Supporting America's Healthcare System in the Fight Against the Coronavirus. It starts out with Subtitle A, Health Provisions. The first part of these health provisions is going to require that the, health, the Secretary of Health and Human Services submit a report 60 days after the enactment of this act on the integrity of the medical supply chain. That requires them to not only look at inside of America, but anything that comes from outside into us. It's also going to require that drug manufacturers of critical life-saving drugs have to notify the Secretary of Health and Human Services of any discontinuance of service for those drugs. Not only those drugs, but any protective equipment, things like ventilators that these that everyone's been talking about in the news, those manufacturers are going to have to notify our government that they're going to stop making them. This part also added certain respiratory protective equipment to the strategic federal stockpile of medical equipment. Not only that, but it protects those manufacturers that made that medical equipment legally for any loss at all in a time of emergency. So for people that are dying because maybe the equipment's not good enough, these companies are going to be completely protected because we're in a state of emergency. The next part restates what the Families First Act said in that COVID-19 testing is covered for any group or individual healthcare plans. Not only that, but healthcare providers are going to have to come up with a cash price for the testing for COVID-19 so that insurance companies know how much they're going to pay. Also, it's going to make sure that insurance companies cover any preventative measures for COVID-19. That's any items, services, or immunizations that come up at any time. Insurance companies are going to have 15 days to add those to their plans. Subpart B provides direct support to healthcare providers. It provides $1.3 billion in grants for those areas that are considered medically underserved. Not only that, but it places an emphasis on telehealth and how we can use that in our current healthcare system. It also allows for the access to the Ready Reserve Corps, which is basically an injection of labor into the medical industry. This bill also changes the Public Health Service Act so that it no longer reads with the word substance abuse and instead says substance use disorder in all the locations where it said substance abuse. It also makes sure that people that have substance use disorder can with give written consent to medical professionals for those medical professionals to disclose that information to other doctors within HIPAA guidelines. It also reauthorizes the Healthy Start program, which is a program that provides services and education to new mothers. And it makes sure that the Secretary of Health and Human Services launches a campaign to raise awareness of blood donations and how important that blood donations are. This bill also revitalizes a bunch of programs that were used in the past to strengthen both the doctors and nurses workforces. In this time of emergency, we need more medical professionals and this is the bill's response. Not only that, but it's going to provide grants to programs that specify in geriatric health care. It's also going to make sure that the Secretary of Health and Human Services comes up with a detailed plan of how these programs are going to be carried out and how they're going to be effective in the future. I'm going to preface this next part with it might be taken out of context because I don't know everything about federal money funding financial aid to colleges, but there is a provision of this bill that it provides relief to colleges. And that relief comes in the form of not having to match federal funding for financial aid programs. So for those students that deserve financial aid, the only money that's going to be available for that financial aid program is coming from the federal government. I don't know what that means for the future, and I don't know how long it'll last, but I do know that that is what the bill says. This bill reiterates the sick leave programs that I talked about in episode 4, as well as requires a telehealth deductible on all high deductible plans after December 31st of 2021. Not only that, but it amends some healthcare laws so that less face-to-face -face physician time is allowed in our current healthcare system. It also provides that HSA funds can be used to to purchase menstrual products, things like pads and tampons, you can use your HSA money to purchase those products. Not only that, but it continues to say that Medicare Part B will cover any immunization or vaccine for COVID-19. And it requires reporting on non-prescription -prescri strength 
cough syrup for children under the age of six to the federal government. And we're gonna finish off this video with a bit that I call things that make you say, hmm. Hmm. This is where the bill kind of feels like it veers off to the left a bit, and you'll have to excuse me because I'm gonna jump on my soapbox for a minute because these provisions have absolutely no place in this bill. This is a critical care bill meant to get America through an extremely tough pandemic and a huge time of stress, and we're slipping in these dumb provisions for somebody to gain somewhere out there, and I put my entire crack research team on it, but honestly, they didn't even have enough time to delve into why exactly these, got provi these provisions got put through and who they're benefiting the most. But I will tell you but th that these things are absolutely ridiculous. The first provision I'm going to talk about is the most ridiculous one, and it's a Sunscreen Innovation Act that puts in a fast track for new active ingredients in non-prescription strength sunscreens so that they can be made into and sold as non-prescription strength sunscreen. This is ridiculous. Ridiculous. And this is the whole reason that I started this channel, so that people like us, everyday Americans, can see what kind of stuff that Congress is slipping into these critical bills, this huge bill that was supposed to provide so much relief for so many Americans, and for some reason they need to put in this Sunscreen Innovation Act so that some company can make a quick buck off of a new drug that they found or a new active ingredient that they found to sell as new prescription strength sunscreen. The next part that really didn't fit into this bill, I'm going to scroll through just so you get an understanding of the feeling that I got when I looked at it and I've scanned through it and it doesn't seem like it's providing any relief to COVID-19 to either individuals or small businesses. I'm not sure who's profiting or who's benefiting or who this was for, but it feels wrong. It feels like a lobby group came in and just stuck this piece in here at the end so that someone that they're affiliated with is going to get some type of benefit that I cannot see. Anyway, so we're going to scroll through it just so you know what I'm talking about. This is the entire portion that they inserted, all of this in gray, that they inserted into this bill about the treatment of over-the-counter drugs, non-prescription over-the-counter drugs. There's judicial requirements in here, some labeling, how hearings are going to go down, timing of hearings, uh, I mean, just look at it all. It's, it's absolutely insane that they got this into this bill and nobody said anything about it. Procedure of minor changes, confidentiality, nothing in here says anything about how this is going to help prevent or keep America safe from COVID-19. I mean, and there it finally stopped. This is some extra provisions at the, the tail end of it as well, so it wasn't actually done. Anyways, so that was the second piece that stuck out to me that was like a real problem with this bill that someone had just tacked onto the end for some kind of personal gain. And that was things that make you say, hmm. Hmm. The last thing I want to say about this bill has to do with what are called zoonotic drugs. And zoonotic drugs are drugs used to treat animals for diseases that might infect humans. And this portion really stuck out to me because of all the speculation of how this disease originated. I've heard a lot of different things, a lot of different animals being eaten that maybe were diseased. Uh, I'm not going to say that any of that's correct, but it's an interesting reaction from the government to actually include an, a way to expedite the approval of zoonotic drugs to treat animals that may have life-threatening diseases to humans. Overall, Title III of the CARES Act is a pretty good thing. Unfortunately, it's pretty reactionary, like adding respiratory equipment to the strategic stockpile of medical equipment, or bolstering the healthcare workforce, or the zoonotic drugs expediting. That's an interesting reaction, and it's not really going to help in the long term, or it might, but it's an interesting reaction by the government that they're expediting zoonotic drug approvals right now, based upon the suspected origins of this disease. Unfortunately, there were things that got put through that were like the Sunscreen Innovation Act and the over-the-counter over non-prescription drug clauses. Those things are absolutely ridiculous and government, the government needs to be held accountable for why those things got passed and why they got put into this critical package because it sets a horrible precedent going forward through the coronavirus for congressmen and congresswomen to 
push more of their initiatives into these critical bills. Anyways, with that, I just want to say thanks for watching. Follow me on Twitter. As always, like and subscribe, and thank you again.